Hey y'all, thanks for tuning in to Outdoor and Door Texan. Today I'm going to walk y'all through how I grind deer meat at home. I'll be showing y'all my step-by-step -step process as well as all the tips and tricks I've picked up over the years, so when it's finally your turn to do it, it'll be a breeze. First up, you're going to need, well, venison. I'm working with four pounds of venison that I removed all the fat and as much of the silver skin from as possible. Then I cubed it into about one inch chunks. Deer fat is a big no, so get rid of every speck of it. Silver skin on the other hand is up for some debate, but it definitely adds chewiness to the meat. So personally, I always try to fillet off as much as possible. Also, some of you may notice that the meat in this video has some odd coloring to it that looks kind of like silver skin, but the majority of that is in fact ice because I just pulled this out of the freezer. You want the meat to be semi-frozen when you grind it in order for things to run much smoother through the machinery. After prepping your meat, you want to add fat. Now, there are some folks who swear by 100% deer meat grind, but in my experience, deer meat itself is too dry and it doesn't bind very well without a little fat added in. I'm using fat trimmed off of a pork butt that I smoked some time back, but you can also use beef fat or even bacon ends and pieces, which you can find at most grocery stores. I'm mixing one pound of pork fat to my four pounds of venison, which is an 80-20 ratio. Depending on your taste, you're welcome to mess around with 90-10, 80-20, or even 70-30 if you want some serious fat content. Whichever way you go though, just remember to semi-freeze your fat so it doesn't melt inside the grinder and gum up the works. Now onto the grinder. I'm using a Kino meat grinder which attaches to a KitchenAid stand mixer. They're relatively cheap, they come with everything you need to grind meat as well as stuffed sausage, and I haven't had any trouble with it yet. I'll make sure to leave the Amazon affiliate link for this one in the comments below. If you don't have this particular brand attachment, or a stand mixer for that matter, don't change the channel just yet. I'm still walking through the general steps you need to follow in order to make a good ground venison regardless of what type of grinder you're working with. Just like the meat and fat, you'll want to stick the grinder parts in your freezer for about 30 minutes or longer. If you haven't noticed yet, everything in this process is much better when cold. The meat and fat hold shape better when semi-frozen, and having the cold internal parts will help reduce friction heat created while the machinery is running. Assembling this attachment is pretty simple. Insert the auger into the tube, and then add the four-sided blade facing out, attach the coarse grinding plate for our first pass, and then screw everything down with the ring. Also, be careful not to over-tighten the ring, as that will sometimes prevent the auger from turning inside. To attach the grinder, take off that front plate from your stand mixer. Then, insert the attachment and make sure that that auger clicks into the back hole securely. Then, simply tighten that side nut, locking everything into place. Finally, turn it on to give everything a quick quality check, and barring any screeching metal noises or fires, you should be all set to grind. Now, the actual grinding stage is pretty self-explanatory. Toss in one to two cubes of meat, add a little fat, and keep interchanging until you run out of stuff to grind. Make sure to use your plunger to feed the meat and fat directly into the auger, and never, ever, ever put your fingers down that hole. Now once you're done with grind number one, you should have a big pile of coarsely ground meat. A single pass through a coarse plate will give you chunky, hard to break up meat that's perfect for chili recipes. If that's all you want to do with your ground venison, hand mix the bowl a little bit just to ensure that the fat and meat is well mixed, then bag it up for your freezer. If you're looking for a slightly meatier texture that'll hold more moisture, best for something like burgers, meatloaf, sausage, among others, you'll want to pass that through the grinder a second time, but this time using a medium plate. Also, if you're looking to make jerky snack sticks or some types of bologna or anything else that requires more of a meat paste texture, just pass the meat through a second time but use the fine plate instead. Personally, I prefer to use my ground venison for mostly burgers, so everything went back through that second time using a medium plate. You can see that the texture of the medium plate plus my 80-20 fat ratio makes for a perfect burger patty. And I can tell you from experience, they are delicious to boot. As always, thank y'all so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions at all or any comments to add on how you do things at your house. If you like what you see, please make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more great content to come. All right, y'all, take care.